and you're interested in something, if you can, what we call shadow that person or take a, a day that you get to look at it, that is really helpful because you know what? I was gonna be a physical therapist and that is what I planned to go to college for was to be a physical therapist. And then I got to go to the hospital and work in the physical therapy department when I was a senior in high school and then when I signed up for my classes, my freshman year of college and saw how many math classes I had to take, I'm like, I don't think I really want to do this after all. And I'm so glad I knew that ahead of time. I saw that I really didn't like the job as much as I thought. I didn't like all the training you were going to have to have to do it. And then I had worked with children for years. I, I was the head of a playground in my little neighborhood. And each summer I ran the playground and I thought, I love kids. I think I'll be a teacher. And so that's when I got into teaching and I did that for 22 years before I changed and got and became a counselor. So that's another thing that's really cool. You don't have to always keep the same job. Sometimes you change your mind and you really like something and then you think, oh, I think I'd like to do something different. I have two daughters that have graduated from college. One of my daughters works in exactly what she got her degree in, just like me. I have my degree in counseling and teaching and that's what I did. But my other daughter, her job doesn't have anything to do with what she got her degree in. So sometimes even after you go to college, you look for jobs and you find something that might be different than what you thought. So it's very exciting to start thinking about what you might wanna do when you get older. So keep your eyes open and look around to see what all the possibilities that are out there. And remember, don't get stuck because you can change your mind. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ms. Mori. <laughs> okay, am I up? Yeah. Okay, first I just want to say hi to everybody and tell you how much I miss you. It's so quiet here without all of you and I want to let you know I have a very important message from Mrs. Majak who is right next door to me. She's in her office and she couldn't be here today because she has a principal's meeting. So that's what she's doing. But she wanted me to tell you how much she loves and misses all of you and that she'd much rather be doing this right now with you guys. So I just had to tell you that from her. Well, my, my story um, incorporates a lot of what Mrs. Maury said. After I graduated from high school, I went to a college in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. And I started out as a psychology major. I was very interested in psychology. But then that summer, to make a little extra money, I worked at a summer camp for students of all ages that needed a little extra help. And I really enjoyed working with the kids and teaching them. And um, I loved seeing uh, kids learn and grow. So I thought, you know what? I think I wanna teach. So I changed my major, what it's called in college, your area of study, I changed it to teaching. And then when I got my first teaching job, I worked with students in grades three, four, five, and six at the time. And I noticed a lot of them had trouble reading, even though they were older. And that really bothered me. So I went back to school and I got my master's in reading. And at this point, I decided I was gonna to move to Florida. And when I came to Florida, I had a few more years in a fourth grade classroom, but then I became a reading coach for a school. And being a coach let me work with teachers and students, and I got to support my principal and my assistant principal um, in a lot of ways. So since I was doing that, I thought, you know what, I think, I might like to be a principal someday. So I went back to school again and I got a, another master's in educational leadership. And then I ended up getting hired here at Golfgate to help support all of you and Mrs. May Jack, which I'm very happy with. So Ms. Maury's right. Um, you, you can change your mind about things that you wanna do and your, your career path can shift. 
Um, and so, and I even before, um, Ms. Mori talked about shadowing someone. Before I became an assistant principal, when I was in classes, I shadowed my assistant principal at my previous school at Wilkinson Elementary. And so I really thought, okay, yeah, I do like this. This is for me. So that's that's how I got here. Very cool. Thanks, Very Ms. Michael cool. Acco. Of course. <laughs> do you Never? want me to share, Mr. Yeah, Smith? Yeah. Okay. Um, so all of you know I'm from Tennessee. I have that southern accent that's not <laughs> undeniable. Um, <laughs> but so in high school, I always worked with kids. I worked in the summer at a summer camp and I helped them with their homework and I watched them during that. It was through my local school um, county that I lived in in Fayetteville. So I did that for a while and I was a counselor at camps and all that kind of stuff. Um, but when I graduated high school, I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist like Miss Maury. And then I got to college and I also saw the math courses and I was like, no, I'm not very talented in math. So I changed my uh, major, which is what you study, and I changed it to communication. So that's kind of like business. So I have a degree in um, communication studies, which kind of talks all about um, public relations and marketing. And uh, I got a minor in journalism, so I could have worked at a newspaper or at a, a news station or something like that. So. Um, I took a completely different course than what I thought I was going to do. And then when college kind of finished, I, I uh, interviewed for a bunch of different jobs and nothing really seemed to kind of work out in my actual major. So then you guys know I went to Hong Kong and I taught English to three and four year olds for two years and I absolutely fell in love with teaching. And as you guys know, my mom was a teacher and I swore up and down until I was blue in the face that I would not be a teacher. And here I am. Now I'm a teacher to some awesome fourth graders and I absolutely love it. I've taught in, I'd see, I guess I've worked technically in three schools. I worked at a um, ESOL A for my first year in Florida when I moved here after Hong Kong. And then I worked for Woodlawn Elementary and I taught first and fourth grade there for the two years I was there. And then this year I've been at Gulfgate and I've loved it and it's been fourth grade and I miss you guys. And yeah, so I mean, it's pretty crazy where life will take you. Like I said, I never realized I loved teaching so much. Um, and I do. I don't know what else I honestly would be doing if I didn't teach because I'm just so much a kid myself still. Like I just thrive around you guys. So. I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to see you guys very soon, okay? But yeah, the future is unlimited. You have so many options. So like Miss Maury said, keep those eyes open. You're not even gonna know what you're gonna do. Like it's just gonna hit you one day, like wham. Okay, this is what I'm doing. So there you go. And what's crazy is that at a time like this, we're kind of finding that there's going to be new jobs created that we, six months or a year ago, we never would have thought would have either been a job. And now they're coming up with new things because the world keeps changing. So there's jobs that you guys haven't, can't even find yet or wouldn't even think of yet because they haven't even been created yet. So that's something that's always changing in our world is that jobs are being created and new jobs and new careers are always popping up, you know. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, people never would have thought that they could have gotten jobs at, at, you know, with like they have with Google or Amazon, because those were things that they weren't these huge things like they are now. So it was things that people never thought they could do as a career, and then they were able to do them. So for me, because I know I've talked a little bit about my background in, in class, but for me, I always wanted to be a teacher, like growing up. And so that kind of never changed. It was always just like, depended on what I wanted to teach. So I actually went to college and I was a math major and um, I was going to be a high school math teacher like that was my plan and then like Miss Maury and Miss Navrit I got to college math classes and I was like no I don't want to take these math classes <laughs> and I knew that I always liked theater so I decided I was going to major in theater so when I graduated with my bachelor's degree which is the first degree um, the first four-year degree you get I bachelor a bachelor's in theater with a minor in secondary education which means I was learning how to be a middle school or a high school teacher for theater so after that, I ended up moving down to Florida in 2012, and a, a year after that, I started teaching high school theater. 
So um, while I was doing that, I was actually getting my master's in education so that I had more training in how to be a teacher. And that really helped me learn more than I knew before about best ways to teach students of all ages. Um, and then after teaching high school theater in Orlando for two years, I moved um, over here to Sarasota County. And that was when I started teaching fourth grade. So this was my fifth year teaching fourth grade. And you guys know this is my first year at Gulfgate. Um, but over the last couple of years, I actually worked on getting my second master's degree. So that would be, so I've got a bachelor's degree, which took me four years, and then a first master's degree, which took me two years, and then another master's degree, which took me two years. So total right now, I have eight years of education. So you can never stop, lear you don't have to ever stop learning. You can kind of keep working on and keep learning things. And sometimes learning comes without even getting a degree. It just is something that you keep learning about. So now my kind of my new goal, which I never thought I was going to have this plan, but my new goal is to someday kind of be like Miss Michael Acco and become either an assistant principal or a principal or some kind of administrator um, with the school district. So even this summer, I'm going to be starting a, an online learning program that's going to help me with um, learning how to write, write grants and do extra things that kind of help in terms of raising money and getting funds for schools and for nonprofit organizations. So um, so I'm still going back to school just because I like to learn. I love to learn. So, um, so here's how we're, here's how we're gonna do for you guys to be able to do your round robin sharing because I know you guys have worked hard on your PowerPoints. You're not sharing the entire PowerPoint. If you um, don't want to share your PowerPoint, you just want to talk. You are welcome to do that. That is perfectly fine. If you are decided to dress up. Um, we'd love to be able to see your outfit, so you just have to like move your camera or move yourself so we can see what you're wearing and you can tell us about that. So for sharing your PowerPoint, if you want to share the screen that you're talking about, at the bottom of your Zoom session, if you hover at the bottom, then all the buttons pop up, you should see one that says share screen. When you click on share screen, it'll pop up with a few different windows that will show you what you have to pick which screen you want to share. So if you have for example, you have PowerPoint open and you might have Google Chrome open and you might have a game open, then you'll have to click on the PowerPoint image and that will share only the PowerPoint image with everybody in the Zoom session. So it doesn't show you show us everything on your computer, okay? So um, what we'll do, I think just the easiest way is probably gonna just be because I can see you all in a tile, we, we can just go like right in order. So Angel, are you ready to share? Cause you're the first one up. Now let me unmute you. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right. So. Angel, it's on you. You have to catch, uh, wait, my career at, as a police officer. You have to catch bad people to make the city or state safer. I chose it because it is what I'm going to be when I grow up. My second reason I, I, I will be a police officer is because I think I, I will be a, a good one and do my job. Also, um... Also, I did not wear a outfit. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I love your reasons. I'm so glad you gave reasons. Very Thank nice, you. Angel. All um, right, so um, Amelia, you're next on my tile. Let me unmute. There you go. Oh, we can't hear you, girly. Oh, she's got her screen, yay. So then on your screen, just click over to where you have your PowerPoint open, and then we should be able to see it. Perfect. It's not working. It's not working? No. No? If you just want to talk about it, you can. That's fine. Yeah, you can just read off of it. That's fine. <laughs> My career is a professional artist, and I chose this because I like art and drawing, and I find the job interesting. Some careers they do are to develop new methods of art, display their work at places like museums, craft fairs, for, and for people to buy them, and use techniques such as knitting, painting, and sculpting in their art for variety. Amelia, I'm impressed you don't want to be an astronaut. 
<laughs> That's your favorite thing. I did want to do that, but I didn't know how to dress up like it. Uh, but you're That's so okay. cute. You'd be a great artist, too. And I love That's your background, fantastic. too. Yeah, and the things you've been sending me, you would definitely make a great artist, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. All right. Uh, Beckham, you're next on my tiles. <laughs> okay. How do you screen share again? At the bottom, uh, if you hover over the bottom, you'll see a button that says share screen. Yeah. And then when you click that, you'll click on the on the box that shows your PowerPoint. Uh, there is no box. I have desktop one, whiteboard. It doesn't yeah. show you your little screen where you can see your PowerPoint? No. Do you have your PowerPoint open? Um, let's see. One. You got it, no rush. Um. Do you want us to come back, Beckham? No. You got it? Okay. I think I just about got it. Uh, yeah, you can come back. Okay. Uh, let me mute you. Okay, so next, Riley Batson. You're up. Okay, so let me go to, wait, so, wait one second. I need to get my PowerPoint up. You can have another person share real quick. Okay, um, let's see. Dylan, I'll come to you next. Let me unmute. Okay. Where is Dylan? He disappeared. Where did Dylan go? Did we lose Dylan? Oh, no, oh, there he's, he is. He's sharing, okay. Yeah. Alrighty, so my presentation by me a chemistry teacher. When I am a grown up, I want to be a chemistry teacher because a chemistry teacher slash scientist does this. Conducts experiments. I especially love dramatic explosions. Another duty a scientist has is to make discoveries that challenge what we already know. Another duty a scientist has is to, is to create stuff like vaccines for other people. Vaccines can save people from deadly viruses. Wouldn't it be amazing to find a vaccine from COVID-19? Oh, Dylan, that was fantastic. It's not over oh, yet. Got one more slide. One more slide. Oh, one more slide. Oh, one more slide. oh, I can see. Sorry. It's up there. Okay. Can you do the next part? It's okay. Just, I can still read it. Um, creative is about is because I like to exper experiment with stuff. F figuring out how and why things work work like they do is cool. Why, why I chose this career is because when scientists do experiments, they wear lab coats and goggles. They look smart and important. That was fantastic, Dylan. That was really good. Thanks, Dylan. You'd make a great scientist. All right. So let's come back to Beckham. Are you ready? Uh, no. I still don't see it. Okay. If you want to, you don't have to use your PowerPoint. You could just talk to us, okay? Okay. So how about you do that, okay? Yes. Architect. 
job duties. Meet with clients to determine objectives and requirements for a structure. Give elements on cost and construction time. Prepare structure specifics. Direct workers to prepare drawings and documents. Prepare scale drawings either with computer, software, or by hand. I would enjoy being an architect because I like to build things like bridges. Yeah, do you have your cool popsicle bridge that you made, Stu? Yeah. You should go get that and show it after everybody uh, does that. You did a great job with that, okay? Okay. Mr. Smith? Yep, so we'll go to uh, Riley if he's ready, and then Beckham, whenever you get a chance, you can go grab that, and then we can show whenever you have it, okay? So, Riley Batson, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, I know it's a little small. I was gonna talk more anyway. That's okay. I wanna be a 3D animator. The three duties is rendering out a design, detailing the design, and adding color. What I like about this career is that you can add art elements, and I am, and, and I'm a very skilled artist. The reason I want to do this is because. I, I love animating. I just find it fun. I don't. And, and I mean, and you can add your own element from your imagination to it. Yeah, that's what's really cool about anything artistic related is that you get to kind of think outside the box and create new things or combine things to create new things. So. Yeah, Riley, you'd be really good at that job. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. So thank you, Riley. Thank All you, right. Riley. Next up, Brooklyn. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Uh. I'm kind of. I don't really know how to screen share, but I'm kind of. It's okay wait. if you don't screen share. Wait, what? what's happening? Oh, screen share, screen. Wait, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. It's okay, Brooklyn. If you just want to read it to us, you can. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but, uh, wait, hold on. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah, now it looks like it's starting to see your screen. Oh, now I now I got it. Okay. Got it. So, wait, I think it's this one. I have a lot of tabs open. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's kind of loading. Ooh, okay, so Dave is an animal rescuer. Duties and responsibilities career picked by me. Um, it's kind of loading, so I'm just gonna wait. Where is it? <laughs> Do you remember what you were gonna say? Um, no, not really. Um, I kind of trouble remembering things, but. Do you think if you took it off screen share, it might load a little quicker? Oh, wait a minute. It's doing something now. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. Now. There, there we go. Um, the day in the life of an animal rescuer. Um, I, I picked the like backgrounds like animals because, you know, it's like. Like a jungle. I love it. Yeah. That's how I was going. Love it. It's kind of loading the other slides. <laughs> if you want to, Brooklyn, we can come back to you and then when it's loaded up. Um, that's fine. 
Okay, so we'll come back to you, okay? So I'll click stop sharing, but then it, you can go into, um, it'll load up and then we'll come back to you, okay? Okay. All right, so Ava, you're next. Devin, please stop sharing your screen. I can't. Oops. All right, um, Ava, you're unmuted. There you go. Okay. I chose an audiologist. I can't. Was it that? An audiologist because I couldn't think of anything else and my mom suggested it. So what does an audiologist do, Ava? It, they um, help people, they give like, um, they, um, they're doctors that um, help people with balance or um, hearing problems. Do you think I went to an audiologist when I had that really bad vertigo spell? Maybe. Maybe. Well, you were, you kind of were off balance. Yeah, so I probably had somebody like an audiologist working with me, didn't I? Mm-hmm, and ears are what balances your whole body. Exactly. So why do you think your mom suggested that for you, sweet girl? I don't know. All moms want their kids to be masters. Because you're sweet <laughs> and you work well with other people and you are such a great helper. That's probably why. Okay. Name, I have a name tag. That's so cool. And my mom's thing. Her coat. You look very official, Miss Ava, very official. And I think Chloe's doing some, a different doctor too. All righty, are you, are you finished, sweet girl? Yes. Well, great job. All right, thanks, Ava. All right, uh, next up is Tony. Please. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, what I want to be is I want to be an inventor and invent things. So, and the job responsibilities for an inventor is they um, create new things with their ideas, they can test their ideas. They can, I don't know. Uh, they understand how to, how to use patents to protect their ideas. They don't fit file, file. File, you're correct, yes sir. Patents right away. They stick to one in trusty. Industry. Industry. They, attend, they attend trade shows and seminars. Great. They outsource. They have a sense of urgency, and those are probably some of the important ones. Cool. And they are not afraid to fail. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Antonio. So do you have any invention ideas right now? Um, well, I kind of, I want to um, invent the, the first flying car, and I know that's going to be really hard. Hey, but anything you put your mind to, I bet you'll work hard for. We have airplanes, why can't we have flying cars? Exactly. <laughs> All right, exactly. thanks. Thanks, Tony. All right, next up is Ella. I want to be an astronomer because I love science and space. It, space satisfies me. I love to do experiments in studying stars and looking through telescopes. I love this job. You'd be a great astrom astronomer, Miss Ella. <clears throat> 
Fantastic, sweet girl. Thank nice you. Nice job, Ella. All right. Uh, next up is Ryan. After Ryan, Brooklyn, we'll come to you. Yeah. The career I chose is a drone pilot. I chose drone, uh, drone pilot duties and responsibilities include they have to know how to fly, fly and operate a UAV, a UAV and take pictures and videos from the sky. A UAV um, is an unnamed aerial vehicle. Being a drone pilot can work in many places, such as the military, real estate, Amazon, construction, and many other. You have to get a special license through the FFA. Nice, very nice, Ryan. Cool, nice job. I think you'd be a great one. Plus drones are just fun. Drones are a lot of fun. I've always wanted to fly one, but they're so expensive. I'm scared I'll break it. <laughs> oh, cool, you have one? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. That's cool. That's awesome. Be careful with that thing. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ryan. We'll go back to Brooklyn. Oh, you want to try if you want to share your screen again. It's kind of um, getting less laggy, so. Okay. Nice word. I like that word, lagging. Very good word, Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now it's working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um. <laughs> wait. There we go. We see it. So. Why I um why I picked my res why I picked animal rescue as my career why I picked animal rescue for my career is because I love animals and helping them and they make me feel special and also wait what okay someone's drawing on my screen let's not draw uh, on anybody else's screen please. So, wait, hold on, let me get to the next slide. Um, duties and responsibilities. Duties and responsibilities about being an animal rescuer is that you should always care about the animals and be careful and also don't give them your scent because like what if they're a baby and a baby animal and they lost the mom and if, they, and, and if their mom found them, they would smell like human. Um, and the next slide is more duties and responsibilities. Some other responsibilities to help is to make sure the the animals are nice and healthy and nothing is going wrong with them. And awesome. that's it. Awesome, nice job, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And that's a good tip about the scent, especially for any of you that just find baby animals that might need rescued or might need help is that it's important not to touch them because sometimes if you put the human scent on a baby animal then the parent won't might not the mother might not come back and take care of them so like when you find baby bunnies or baby birds you it's best to leave them alone and maybe call somebody to find out what to do instead of you trying to take care of them because if you can't take care of them and then their mommy doesn't come back then they might not survive so that's definitely a great tip thanks i think angel uh, has a question mr smith yep uh, Oh, I'm, so I also have so I also have a drone. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's gray and black. <clears throat> nice. Drones are starting to become more popular. I think a lot of people are probably having starting to make those. <clears throat> so, all right. Uh, let's see. Next on my screen is Sophia. You're up. I'm a teacher. <laughs> Uh, I forgot to do a PowerPoint. That's okay. All you right, can just so tell us. Yep. <laughs> what did you find? Because not all teachers are the same. Um, I'm an English teacher. What grade do you think you'd want to teach, Sophia? Older, younger, what? Second grade. Second grade. Ooh, you'd be a good second grade teacher. I can already see it. Um. Why do you want to be a teacher? Because I like working with kids. Yeah. 
you're really good with working with other people. I've seen it all year. You're fantastic at it. Yeah. Any other info you want to give us? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Sophia. All right. Next on my screen is Jameson. I want to be an artist when I, I, I said artist, but I, but then I realized I want to be a bas a professional basketball player. So, so what do you think you're going to have that? to, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> for the basketball player or mm -hmm. the artist? Either one, because it's definitely different preparation for both of them. I want to be a basketball player because I would be famous and you also get a lot of money. <laughs> do you like the sport? <laughs> Huh? You love the sport? Because you're going to have to love the sport to be able to make it your job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then. What do you think you're going to have to do to become a famous basketball Practice. player? Practice. Practice. What else? Um. Do you think you'll have to maybe, like, push yourself to be on different teams and, like, kind of tell yourself it's okay if you lose a couple games, but one day you'll get there? Yeah. Yeah? you got to have some really good perseverance in that little uh, industry. But I think you can do it. You're very athletic. You're very athletic. So thank you. Well, and Jameson, what he's talking about being a basketball player. There's When you're training for any job, there are certain skills called soft skills and hard skills. So your soft skills are things like perseverance and de determination and teamwork. Those are what we call soft skills because they're the things that as a person, you do those things and they make you better at, at whatever job it is that you're doing. A hard skill is like an actual learned skill. So for example, if you want to be an artist, a hard skill would be learning techniques for drawing. Or if you wanna be a scientist, learning scientific uh, formulas and learning how to, like Dylan was talking about being a chemistry teacher, learning how um, certain chemistry procedures work and how certain chemical, what certain chemicals do. Those are kind of hard skills. Or if somebody wants to be a plumber, then how to fix a toilet is a hard skill. A soft skill would be, like I said, that determination. It can be the teamwork. It could be that you're a good leader. Being a good leader is considered a soft skill. So it's something you don't necessarily learn as uh, by being trained, it's just something that you kind of become as a person. So that's something important to look at when you're looking at jobs too, is the difference between a hard skill that anybody can teach you and a soft skill that you have to develop inside yourself. So, all right, um, next up is Parker. Awesome, Jameson, thank you. Parker, are you feeling better? We never even got to ask you. Are you feeling better, buddy? Yeah? Good. We can't hear you, buddy. Is your microphone where you could move it a little closer, maybe? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. We can hear you now. Um, I wanted to be a pet store owner because um, the duties to be one is take care of animals, keep the store in stock, and pay the bills and workers. And the reason I want to be it is because I love animals and I don't want to be a vet because I don't want to hurt animals or give shots to animals. Very cool. That's good. And it's good that you, ref that you reflect like that, that you want to be helpful to animals, but then there are certain things that you just don't want to be able to do or want to have to do. Awesome, Parker. All right. Um, Gabby, you're up. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to be an Olympian when I grow up because I feel like that's one way to live my dream and actually show people what my talent is. So I think there'll be a really cool career to do and so Miss never can be happy and say oh I taught her <laughs> hey your mom sent me a video today of your floor routine I was like she did so good I'm so proud of you you rocked 
rocked it, girly. Yay. The sky's the limit for you, Miss Gabs. I think you'll be able to be a gymnast if you work really hard and stay determined, okay? It's just like Jameson wanted to be a basketball player. Any type of professional professional athlete got to put in a lot of that extra time. I want to try football. But <laughs> hey, why not? Football. Yeah, you can do <laughs> <laughs> Great All job, right. Gabs. Thanks, Gabby. All right, Addison, you're up. Oh, no. Re are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm okay. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Can I screen share? Yeah, at the bottom, you'll see a button that says share screen. So you want to click on that. And then pick the, pick the, yep, there you go. Perfect. Uh, these are only some duties of being a fashion designer, making sketches by hand or computer, developing patterns, analyzing trends in fabrics, colors, and shapes, sourcing supplies, selecting and buying fabrics and trims. Um, and why, what I found interesting about this job is um, that fashion designers get to create new clothes for new people every day. That's and, so cool. And I, uh, on my camp, I, they, they give me like fabric and I always create things with it at home. Very and cool. I knit. You know what I mean? You knit, Addison? Did she hear me? You want to show you Do you want me to show you? Because I have. Yeah, if you have something you've knitted, that would be really cool to see. Yeah, please. See, like I said, the hard skills and soft skills. Hard skill, knitting would be a hard skill. It is a skill you have to learn that you know I how to do. Started. That's awesome. I just started it in a bus. Hold on, take it off screen share so we can see where yep. are you. I did. Oh, very nice. What are you making? Um, a, no, like we're trying to make a bunny because we saw on YouTube how to make a bunny out of just like a square. Oh, cool. So, very cool. Addison, you can teach me how to sew. My mother would be really mad at me if I told her I don't know how to sew. <laughs> My poor husband. <laughs> teach me. <laughs> teach me next year, please. Do you, would you want to uh, go on one of those design TV shows? Like one of those competition no, shows with the designers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd be, be really good at that, girly. It's called Chunnel. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Hey, and I want to congratulate you. Those words, some of those words in your PowerPoint were really challenging, and you nailed them, girly. I'm so proud of you. Great job. Thank you. All right, so let's jump over to Oliver, because you're next on my screen. Okay. So can I, can I screen share? Yeah, if you want to click screen share, yep. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. Um, so I want to be a zookeeper. Uh, I would like cool. to be. I would like to become a zookeeper be because I love animals. A zookeeper's day starts with cleaning the enclosures and getting it ready for the visitors. You can prepare, you have to prepare food for the animals. You also have to enta entertain them and help them to exercise. You help animals in their, in their environment by collecting and recycling old phones. The most exciting part about your day as a zookeeper is you can care and help for the animals every day. And that's my presentation. Awesome job. Awesome, Oliver. A lot of good information. And I really, that picture is kind of cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Oliver. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Chloe, you're up. My career is um, a dermatologist. So what's a dermatologist do? Um, a dermatologist is a type of doctor who focuses on the diseases of the face, scalp, hair, and 
nails and skin. Some important qualities to have to, um, to be a dermatologist are to be compassionate, to be very good at science and chemistry, to be open, to continue, continually learn. And you need a high school diploma followed by a four year bachelor degree. Then you need to take the MCAT, which is a test to get into medical school and then complete a residency in dermatology. Very nice. You look like a dermatologist right now. <laughs> I want to be a dermatologist because um, some of my family members and me, um, I kind of have some like skin conditions mm -hmm. that I would like to kind of like help myself and my family. Very and good. Other people. Maybe one day when you become a dermatologist, I'll be old and wrinkly by then and I'll come and see you and you can help me look young again. Deal? Deal. <laughs> All right, thanks, Chloe. All right, uh, Devin, if you're ready, you're up. Um, is it my turn to present or? Yes, yep. Okay, um, I didn't write it, I, I didn't put it in, a, in my PowerPoint, but I have an idea of like what I want to be. Tell us about it. Um, a tax service. So what is that job? What are the responsibilities for that job? Um, I've been watching my mom sometimes do her job. And it's um, mostly about like if people have like questions about tax services and like something um, happened with their taxes, um, they'll like call like my mom's job, Jackson Hewitt. They help for tax service. And I wanna do what my mom does and help with tax service. Cool. Good. Do you like math? Because it's a lot of math for taxes. I like math. There you go. Then you're good. You'll be great. All right. Let's see. All right. Maria. Go ahead. I love your background. Yeah, I do too. Uh, yes. So I had two ideas what to be. No, I had, I had one idea what to become. I was thinking about to be like an Imagineer for Starbucks, like to imagine different like coffee mixtures and stuff. But then something popped in my mind uh, because I was collecting money for, for to go on a cruise one summer. And I want to become a cruise director. Nice! I could totally see you doing that. You have such a personality to be a cruise director. Mm -hmm. So now I'll just read off what I have on my paper. Okay. So, um, hi, today I want to talk about what, what goes in the cruise director's responsibilities. One, he needs to be organized and be ready for anything to happen. Two, he has to organize the whole ship ship and make sure that all customers feel happy and like feel good about the ship and they feel also cruise director responsible for different sections of the boat like party area spa zone and food area also responsible for all employees and and their health I think this career is very exciting, and if you get this career, you'll get a lot of amazement every day. I love it! Plus, you get to travel. Any job where you get to travel, is always, yeah. I'm sure, is a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be nice fantastic job, Maria. to get that, Maria. Fantastic. All right. And thanks, Maria. So, Riley Kelly. Hi. I want to be a cast member at Disney. I dressed up as Pirates of the Caribbean. Cool. I love you. This is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Duties and responsibilities um, to being a cast member is how you get a how how you get to be a character or a cast member is that you need to go to school. You need to act like your character that you are playing. Before you are a character, you have to become a you have to become something else first before a Disney character. Why I choose this career is because you can do cool things like sign books, give people pens, shirts, and way more. You could do a lot of nice things and you can have so much fun doing this career. 
Nice you job. look fantastic. I love it. You it would fit in so well at Disney. I was going to do what, what Gabby said, but I knew she was going to do that, so <laughs> I didn't do it. And you I'll say, look I'm, so I'm, cute, I stopped sweet girl. Doing this. I was like, oh, I want to be Olympian. And I was like, oh, wait, what about Gabby? So I did a <laughs> cast member. And definitely working you at the theme parks fantastic. is a lot of fun, too, because before I was a teacher, I actually used to work at Universal. I, I might have said this in class before, but I got to work at the Spider-Man ride. Riley? I you, didn't know I, you worked at Universal. Yeah, I, I worked there when I lived in Orlando. It was while I was getting my first master's degree and before I started teaching theater. So I, I was working at Universal and I worked at the Spider-Man ride. And there were some people that they worked there for a long time and they really loved it. And some people, they would start out working at a ride and then they would work their way up and then they were in like management positions. So they got to be in charge of like all of Mar the Marvel area or all of the Harry Potter area at Universal. It was really cool. So also, that's awesome. My dad got this thing a long time ago. It's like a little telescope thing. Very I cool, Riley. You look so much like a pirate and those okay. are my favorite movies. This is like an actual map of Animal Kingdom. Oh, that's so cool. Brooklyn, do you have a question? Um, I thought Riley was in like an actress in her like movie, like clothes or something, like an actress. She looks like an actress. Well, that's the, that's the interesting yeah. thing is that when you're working at Disney or Universal or theme parks like that, because it's a theme park, the main thing is theme. So they have a big theme. So if you're working at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, you might be a person who controls the ride, but they still have to act uh, out a certain part. So it's almost mm -hmm. like a, they're living in an improvisational performance. So they don't have a script. They just have to pretend to be that, that type of person. So like when I worked at, mm -hmm. at Universal and I worked at Spider-Man ride, we were the dock workers at the newspaper. So we were basically people who worked for a newspaper company, even though our job in real life was to control the ride. So it's really cool because you get to be an actor while doing other stuff. Oh. Jameson? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Jameson. Um, this is not a question for Riley, but um, it's a question <laughs> for you and Miss Nabbit. Um, uh, do we have any homework on Friday? We we'll can talk about that at the yeah, end. We'll talk about it at the end. Yep. I also have one more thing. This is my parrot. <laughs> my dog. Your dog! <laughs> I think he might be too big for your shoulder, though. <laughs> oh yeah. You look so cute, Riley. My so cute. Oh, and Gabby, you have a question? Go ahead, Gabby. Yeah, good question. So when I was doing mine and when it was someone else's, I'm like, wait, Riley might want to do the Olympian and then Riley right saw her. I'm like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing gymnastics for a long time, so that's fantastic. So you guys, I, I can't, I'm so proud of you guys because you guys have been working really hard for, for the last few weeks on these projects and then being able to present them. I know it's not the way we wanted to present it because I would have rather have been in class and you'd be able to do your full presentation. But considering our circumstances, you guys have done really, really well. And I'm so proud of you. And, and I'm sure Ms. Michaelaco and Ms. Mori and Ms. Navrat all agree because you guys, this is, we've been through a really tough time. And you guys have had to really step up and be very independent. And being able to come on here in our last week of school and be able to present with PowerPoints that are ready to go, you're ready to present in front of everybody, you have all your information, that is awesome. And that's and that Beckham independence is very important. So, Y'all oh, can yeah, see Beckham. Beckham's bridge. He got his bridge. Yeah. So Beckham's already started with his job as an architect. Yeah, that's an <laughs> awesome bridge, Beckham. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, you guys have been working so hard and we're just so appreciative of you guys and we're just so proud of you and you guys really have stepped up and that is the best thing we could have asked for and you guys just rock. I love every single one of you guys and I miss you and I'm sad. I can't, we can't give you hugs at the end of the year, but you know what? You come to fifth grade, you're not going to be too cool to come say hello to your fourth grade. Yeah, right? we're right down the hall. We're right I'm there. I'm going to come find you. <laughs> so. Hey, Ms. Navarro, can we, like, I used to do this in my old, at my old school. Like, before we get to our class, can we, like, come to your guys' class? Well, Ms. Michael Laco might have something to add on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure there'll be some time where you can visit. You can visit and say hello. I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be time for that. But I just want to say um, I do have to take off. Now it's my turn for a meeting. I have my assistant principals meeting. But I wanted to thank your teachers for inviting me to see this and just tell you how proud I am of all of you. I, I thought your presentations were fantastic. I learned some new things myself. I could relate to a lot of it, a lot what you were saying. In some of your careers you chose, I actually thought about those in, in my life. So things do change. But I just wanted to let you know again, I'm very proud of all of you. I miss you. I love you all. And I can't wait till we're, we're back here at school again. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ms. Michalako. Thanks for coming, Ms. Michalako. Of course. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ms. Mori, do you have any final words before we go? I'm just so happy to be here. I, I have missed all of you so much. It's very weird to be a counselor through the computer and the telephone instead of getting to see live people like what I'm so used to at school. So I'm just very glad to see all of you. I'm glad to see you're all okay. You did a fantastic job. And I'm so glad to see your teachers too because I miss them very much. And just thank you for inviting me to join you. Very, very nice job. We miss you too, Miss. We Lori. miss you. All right, Brooklyn, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Um, this whole thing kind of reminds me of the fifth grade, um, fifth grade wax museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like about their like um thing. History. Very good. Good See, connection. See, now you have practice for when you're when you guys have to do that in fifth grade. <laughs> yeah. All right. So because Miss Majak couldn't be with us, and I'm recording our video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute you guys all in just a minute, and then I want everybody to say hi to Miss Majak so that she knows that we're thinking about her. Okay. So I'm going to unmute, and then one, two, three, say hi, Miss Majak. Hi, Miss Majak. Hi. <laughs> I know that she would have rather been here, I'm sure, than having to have been in her other meeting, but I know she's thinking about you guys, and I know she posts videos on Facebook, so if you ha haven't had a chance to check those out, they're on the Gulfgate page, and Majak posts those every week, okay? But for now, if you guys are don't have any questions for me or Miss Navrit, you guys are free to go, and thank you, Miss Maury, for coming and joining us for our career day. Thanks, Miss Maury. Thanks, Miss Maury. My, do my dog and we'll wants to see you guys tomorrow for holes. Oh, you look fantastic. And my doggo doesn't want to see.